So up until this year, I have never grown any kind of melons in my garden, which is surprising, but you always grow so many watermelons that uh, we always have plenty to go around. But we got these seeds in earlier this year, I added them to the site, this canary melon. Now, uh, I have never grown, obviously never grown any melons in my garden, never grown a canary melon. I don't know that I've ever seen a canary melon at the stores around here. Maybe I have and, not, and, and just not noticed. So planted these as summer was starting uh, several months ago, just as kind of an experiment or whatever. And I've been really pleasantly surprised with how the plants have held up in the heat. Now we got them on drip. This is a powdery mildew resistant variety called Halo. I have this on the site. So uh, then spray them about twice a week, some liquid cop, complete disease control, and then stuff for uh, worms and other insects. Been hanging in there pretty good. Now, I did a little video on Instagram a week or so ago showing the curly cue on the end there and how it was starting to dry up but wasn't dried up completely. And somebody commented on there, somebody that's used to growing these things and said that the curly Q isn't always the best indicator on these types that you got to wait till uh, it turns a bright yellow. Well, I had a couple out there that the curly Q was dried up, but they hadn't turned bright, bright yellow. You can see this one's a little yellow, but not bright. But I was like, man, I, you know, I want to try these things. Now, since I've never eaten one, I don't really know what they're supposed to taste like, what the texture's supposed to be like, anything. So we need our, our viewers to kind of help us here. I did cut one. I had one last night that a few worms had got into. I cut it, and it was the texture was almost like a watermelon. And I don't know if it's because it's got left it on the vine too long. I don't know if it's supposed to be a harder texture. I have no idea. So mm. here we go. Now the pictures I've seen was a brighter yellow than those, and I've seen muskmelons and mus I, I, I'm assuming you would classify that as a muskmelon. Or no, this is a canary melon. Yeah. I've seen muskmelons that had a lot brighter color than that, but uh, this is kind of a new experiment on me. Now the one I tried last night was pretty tasty. Okay, so that's what the inside there is looking like. Is that what it looked like last night? Something yeah, like? yeah. And I don't know if it's supposed to be a little bit hollow inside like that or not. It smells good. It does have a watermelon texture to it. Now that one is better than the one I cut last night. Really? I think the one I cut last night was a little too far along. Mm, I don't know about that. Now some folks said this tastes like a pear. It don't really taste like a pear to me. Like I said, I, we're just going to have to keep trying these things until we kind of figure out what the optimal... Yeah, I mean, they're beautiful to grow in what they, you know, the way they turn out. But... No, no, just a note for y'all out there. Y'all can't tell by looking at I sat this one in the refrigerator all night. Mm -hmm. That's nice. pretty refreshing. It is. It would make a nice uh, compliment. A nice compliment to something. <laughs> sure what it's not near as good as that yellow watermelon was to me but i'm just not used to eating them. it's not as sweet as a, mm -hmm. a watermelon now these things are called winter melons so supposedly they store a lot better than a watermelon will it's almost got like a little cucumber taste on the end of it to me. that's what my wife said now i don't know if that's because it ain't quite ripe enough yet I just I don't know. I have one that got a bright yellow and try that and see. I'm gonna leave. I'm gonna leave a few out there and let them go. Yeah. But I was expecting more of a harder texture like a cantaloupe. But these are more softer like a watermelon. At least this one is. Yeah, I'm gonna hold judgment on that. I get one that's bright yellow. So we'll, we'll have to try another one again. Yep. I will say it's always it, iffy when we cut melons on the show, ain't it? I will say it's quite refreshing being yeah. cold like that. So if, if y'all know anything about canary melons out there, let me know what the deal is there. We need some help. We need help. What else we got going on? I want to show you these cucumbers right here. So of all the things, you know, this time of year, we don't really try to grow a whole lot. We got some okra, we got some sweet potatoes going. How's your sweet potatoes looking, by the way? My sweet potatoes are looking probably as good as a crop I've ever had. Had a little bit of worm issue the other day, 
sprayed them with some BT. They are looking really good. Now, I did put them on drip this year, so I've been, and we've had a dry spell, but man, that sweet potatoes in general are just a drought resistant crop. Now, that's one of the few things we can grow in the hot and heat of the summer down here. You know, we got a lot of white fly problems right now that doesn't seem to be bothering them a lot. Man, I, I got some zinnias coming up. White flies are all over. I got over. some pine up there and it's just loaded up with white flies. We seem to have white flies worse in a dry year. And I did a little video on this the other day, but this seems to this appears like it's going to be a bad white fly. And they ain't even started burning down cotton yet. Yeah. And they'll get worse. Uh, in my sweet potatoes, I got. I used the drip early on to kind of get the slips going, but uh, I don't like to keep a lot of moisture down there when they get up and going. So what I, I've got cover crops planted on both sides of mine. I've been having the overhead water to get going. So once my sweet potatoes get a big foliage canopy, what I like to do is just hit them with a little overhead sprinkle just to keep the leaves from wilting. I don't well, want to soak it too yeah, much down I, there. They'll I, rot on you. I'm with you on that. And I watered mine this morning, and I thought to myself when I got through, this needs to probably wind it up. Let them stress, let them put on that root crop, and let them grow out there. And uh, I'm probably not going to water mine anymore, unless it really turns off horribly dry. So where was that here? Cucumbers. So we don't try to grow... I'll try to push the limits a lot this month, August, we kind of take a break. One thing, the last two years, I have figured out you can grow cucumbers during the heat of summer, but there's a lot that goes into it. And uh, I'll probably do a longer video on this. You, you got to have disease resistant varieties. You got to have them on drip. You got to be spraying twice a week. Now, this is a variety of new variety we added this year called Olympus. I've grown it before really like it what i would like to say about this variety that, that i had kind of forgot about this makes a prettier cucumber than the diomede or the stonewall now all three are gynoecious slicer varieties and i, I y'all have to check me on this but i think the disease package on this isn't quite as strong as the diomede or the stonewall but it makes a prettier cucumber they're all pretty consistently straight. So now, all those are the same variety? Yeah, yeah. Those, the, this one's just been on the vine a little longer than these two. Okay. I picked them So they're classified as a, as a slicer? Yeah. Okay. Now, a lot of people will say when they try to grow cucumbers this time of year, they end up bitter on them. Well, then I say let's find out. And they get bitter. reason they get bitter is from heat stress. So let's do a little test here. I wish I had some salt. I don't know about yours, mine ain't better. Well, yeah, are you gonna peel yours? I've heard people think about it, yeah. All right, it can happen because of heat stress. And I will say with these, I got them on drip. And about every other, every two or three nights, I've been letting the drip run all night on these. Not good to me. Anyway, that's a great variety that with a little extra care, you can grow in the hot months, got to trellis some, need the right variety like this Olympian. I can't, I can't get confused if it's Olympian or Olympus. But um, we're going to talk a little bit later about warm season crops that you can grow another round of in the fall. And this is a great uh, example of that. I would be better with a little oil and vinegar and salt and pepper. One more thing. In that same plot, I got some of these guys growing. And this is that Lebanese squash variety called Alexandria. Um, so is it a zucchini? Yeah, it, it's it's more like a zucchini. Looks like a zucchini. Kind of grows like a zucchini. The the these plants, though there's not a lot of noted or uh, listed disease resistance on them. But man, I haven't really had any mildew issues with them, and it's been surprising. Now, they're not the most productive variety of zucchini I've ever grown, but I will say they do really well in the heat. And we always say a true test of a squash or zucchini is to eat it raw, you know. And uh, do you want to cut your own? Yeah. That seems to have a little meatier flavor than what I remember. Yeah, it's a little, uh, it's got a little more of a crunchy texture than a um, traditional zucchini does. Hmm. 
the inside of it was cool. It's got like little three rings right there. A lot of people say these are good for stuffing. So I guess you let them get a little bit bigger, cut them in half, scrape them out, uh, cook them that way. I haven't, I, I've found that I think about this size, the smaller size is kind of better uh, size to pick them at. Like I said, not the most productive, not as productive something like that Pascola is, but uh, really, really been able to take the heat really well. I've been, uh, I've been happy with that one. Now, one thing that you can grow now, I'm going to lead into the sunflowers there, is those beautiful sunflowers. Yeah, I got, I brought all kinds of goods. Love this time of year, and we always get burnt out, and we don't think there's nothing we can plant. Last year, I had them all the way to frost. I need to plant me another round now. We got some new ones we're going to test out. But these things just love the hot, dry weather. Let me show you something here. So I got two varieties here. I'll let you hold that one. I'll hold this one. So both of these are the Joker. And I want you to look at, you see, these are, as opposed to the Pro Cuts, which is single stem, these are going to put out a lot of blooms here. But even within this hybrid variety, you're going to get some variation on your petals. So look at that one. It's a lot brighter red as opposed to this one right here. Mm -hmm. um, but I really like this Joker variety. It is a hair a few days earlier than this other one here, this chocolate cherry. Now, I will say this about the Joker. I think the Joker makes a little better uh, cut flower variety than the chocolate cherry does. So the chocolate cherry looks like this, and it branches off a ton. It's going to make probably more blooms than the Joker, but it's not going to have a real long stem on it. Or a strong stem. Right, right. So it's not necessarily going to be the best cut flower, but it's really pretty variety. I know Miss Hoss has, has really liked this variety. Uh, she grew so far this year. So we've got the chocolate cherry there and a little comment on the bloom size and I think you've noted this before. You could plant these things real, real thick. I've got a couple rows of them. They're stacked in there an inch apart or so. And the bloom size will kind of follow the thickness that you plant. You plant them real thick, you're going to get some nice little miniature blooms like this. You thin them out like I had this row, you'll get some bigger blooms. Yep. But, um, you know, like we said, this is one of those things you need to still be planting sunflowers. I don't know if you knew this, but I've uh, had some people comment on this. I did a little research. So sunflowers are used as kind of a soil detoxifier, soil cleanser uh, cover crop. So if you, you know, some people make a booboo here and there and they get some compost or some mulch or something that's got some chemicals in it that, uh, bad for the soil they say you can plant those sunflowers and it kind of cleans your, your soil i did not know that one more thing we got uh on our fertilizer injectors and i meant to bring one so we're making a little change um on our easy flow fertilizer injectors in the past we have offered the three quarter gallon and the two gallon models and there was the tank was made out of a hard plastic called hdpe now i personally never really had a lot of issues but we had customers had issues with the tanks busting on them and that would happen if you left them under constant pressure so what we're doing is we're going with a completely different model yes it works the same just looks a little different size a little different so we're going with a one gallon and we'll have these private label that have our names on them they'll look nice and pretty uh it's a one gallon tank and it's made out of pvc which is better than that hdp a lot heavier tank right and it won't burst unless you were to drop it at a pretty high elevation so you can leave this one under constant pressure and does fine and i've tested it myself and uh you just you can leave it hooked up all the time yep so what we did is we looked at the improvements we thought we should make off the current one we sold and we made these couple of improvements here and we're going to be in we're going to be handling the warranty issues on these in-house so that's going to make it a little bit more better and we're excited about these changes and and we always look at making these products better and we've had a little bit of feedback here and there so we've got this product coming out how long is it going to be we have uh it should be a few more weeks we should have them another thing too is the little piece the white piece down there that goes in between your, the hose bib connector the hose bib connector is going to be brass instead of plastic that's right more, more so that's why we're out of stock on the injectors currently we we'll get bringing those new ones in we're going to convert over to just that one gallon we're just going to have that one option 
because it's a little better made, it's going to cost a little bit more than the old ones did. Really, it's not much more. It's not much more, and it's more going better. to be more better. More better. Now, there's going to be a lot of people that ask, can they convert from the old tank to the new tank? And somewhere down the line, a few weeks after we get them in stock, we do hope to be able to have some extra tanks uh, as an option on the site. You could convert from the two gallon tank to that one gallon. You just have to trim off some of your hoses that go down into the tank. So it could be done. So we always get this same question again. What can I still do in my garden now? What can I plant in my garden right now? Right. So last, um, last week we talked about cool weather crops you can plant in fall. And this week we want to talk about warm season crops that you can get another round of. You know, a lot of these we done did, we have already done. We already did. We already did, done did uh, several rounds of, but in fall, we can plant one more round. Not everything that we grow in spring, but a good portion of it. And some things, according to different years, you're going to have problems, as we mentioned earlier. White flies seem to be wreaking havoc this year. So it may not be the year that you can grow some of these things as well as you can some of the other years in the late summer going into fall. And this can vary based on location and pest and disease pressure as well. Now, one thing that white flies really don't care a lot for is sweet corn. So you can grow sweet corn on into the fall pretty easy. Heat and worms can cause an issue sometimes, but uh, sweet corn is one of those things that I've grown ambrosia and have real good look at that particular variety. And we get people ask all the time, what variety do I need to plant? And really the only thing I can tell you is the ones I've had experience with, and I've not had any problems whatsoever with ambrosia. And I know you've grown some of it in the fall too. Any of these varieties will do well into the fall. I can only speak to the ones I've grown, but they'll all do fine. Yeah, and just to back up a little bit here, uh, with any of these warm season crops we're talking about planting in fall, you got to look at your first frost date, and then you can kind of count back and see if you have time to plant it or, or you know what your window is there. The only thing to consider here is. You, the crops that are a one-time harvest like corn versus something like beans or cucumbers where you're going to have a four-week harvest window. You would want to plant, if, if you only had 55 days, and even though the date of maturity on cucumbers is 55 days, you wouldn't want to plant cucumbers if you just had 55 days because you're not going to get much of that harvest. Yep. So you got to think about, is a one-time, so a corn, you can cut it pretty close to that, that first frost date, that maturity date. Other things cucumbers, stuff like that, that are a repeated harvest, you need to give yourself a little more leeway. Yep. Going back to uh, corn real quick. So I brought some, uh, some examples here. So like you mentioned, any variety of corn will really work. Now your maturity date in the fall is gonna be a lot faster. I would say come off uh, at least 10 days faster Yep, well, kind of, it's a lot hotter this time of year than it is in the springtime, so those heat units are going to pile up on you. Now, we aim, my aim date for fall corn is, excuse me, end of August, early September is when I like to have mine planted. Based on what zone you're in, you can back that up or uh, push that uh, forward a little bit. If you are if you got a t real tight window and you need something that's going to grow pretty fast, uh, I would highly recommend some of the triple sweep or some of the quad sweep varieties. They're going to come off a good bit faster, 15 days or so faster than your standard uh, varieties like your Silver Queen, Jubilee, stuff like that. Uh, Temptress is a quad sweep. That's probably our fastest growing corn. That would be a great one for the fall if you didn't have a lot of time. I'm going to grow this one right here called Providence, which is a triple sweep by color. Uh, mm. We've got a lot of people in the row by row group who grow this for their market farm, and I've heard really good things about it. So that's the one I'm gonna be planting right there. What else can we plant? Beans. Beans, 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 they're good for your heart, and they're right. Uh, fall is when I like to plant pole beans. I mean, I grow pole beans in the spring, but I really like growing pole beans in the fall. Yep. And, and our Christmas lima beans would be fine also. Now, the thing about Christmas lima beans, we've done this for years. You can plant those babies in the springtime, 
and get you a crop off of them and they're gonna just pretty much go dormant on you they're gonna be there and they're gonna get looking kind of raggedy on you but if you keep them sprayed they're gonna put on another crop and they're gonna make it all the way to frost yeah i like growing these in the fall i just plant me a crop of them in the fall uh, i don't try to string them through the, the summer but you can do that but that is a, a great one it's a speckled butter bean nice big butter bean and when you get these harvested, they freeze real well. It makes some real nice soups. And uh, now, if you're going to think you want to chill a long row with these, but you don't really need that many of them because you'll fill up the bucket in no time, you're going to need some type of trellising system. But these things will make them. What's great is you stand up and pick them. Yeah, and the Horta Nova is uh, really, really, works really, really well for these. I will say this with some of these pole beans uh supplies are getting short and i probably won't have any more until november if we run out so if you want some of these pole lime with some of these pole beans you best act quick because we liable to run out between now and november when we're able to get some more of them rattlesnakes another good one oh, you know, look right. <coughs> some of these always have better success in the fall with rattlesnake beans than i do in the spring it's just a good one for me to grow another one is cantaloupe now uh, we got these melons here and a lot of people don't think of growing a fall crop of, of watermelon certainly But around here the commercial guys grow a fall crop of cantaloupes mm -hmm. Now you want to pick a nice a good solid variety with some disease resistance If I got one in here, there we go And I'm pretty sure the ones the guys grow around here is this Athena yeah, That's the standard variety um, Good disease resistance on that 80 days to maturity this has got 98% germination on it. You about can't beat that. So you can grow you a fall crop of cantaloupes. If you got 80 days or so, uh, I would recommend transplanting them. You could direct seed them. Yeah. But uh, the, you'll see around my house next couple of months or so, they'll be hauling cantaloupe wagons yep. right down the road. Eggplants are another crop that takes a decent amount of insect pressure. Yeah, yeah, they can take a little insect pressure. Now, some people will, and the commercial guys around here will do this, they will, for eggplants and peppers, they will replant another round. Sure. I do when my eggplant and peppers do like you said with the beans. I kind of leave them there. They'll slack off a little bit this month, and once, you know, September comes around, they'll catch a second wind, and uh, they'll really start producing a, a good bit more. They just kind of... They produce okay right now, but uh, it'll really kick up once it cools off oh, just yeah. a hair. So field peas, we had somebody come in the other day and uh, want to plant some field peas, so I cared about them and got them some up. I'll tell you, we got a really short supply of field peas. And I was talking to him and I was explaining what he was talking about, the you know, getting stung up with a pea curio. And I was explaining to him, I don't really know why, but we have had success and other people have had success growing them in the fall and not getting stung up as much as they do in the springtime. <clears throat> I really don't understand that because normally we have more insect pressure than the fall in the spring. But for some reason or another, field peas do okay planting them in the fall of the year. One of the problems is you really, it's hard to get seeds because we don't carry over a lot of pea seeds and we're normally sold pretty short by then. So that can be an issue, but uh, you can plant them, they do well. Heck, I got a pretty crop of iron clay peas I've ever had out there right now. Yeah, I got real pretty crops. I got a couple spots in there where it looks like the cats got after a couple rats in there and roughed them up a little bit. As far as pea seed, I think we got some black eyed peas left. We got some Texas cream 40s. We yeah. do got a few varieties. The Texas there. cream 40s is what I've been recommending to a lot of people. That's a good one. Yeah, field peas, um, you could plant, if you want to do a cover crop and a food crop, you could plant field peas just like we did our iron clay peas and go out there and just do a one-time pick once the, the pods get ready. Yeah. Kill two birds with one stone. Yeah. Okra. Had a customer come in earlier today, showed me his okra. They was up probably three or four inches. He's really excited because he knew he was going to have okra all the way to frost. So it's still time to get that okra in and you can carry it all the way in. does great. What happens is we plant these okra in the springtime and when they get on up pretty good size, we start having some nematode problems with them. They won't carry all the way into the fall. So you need to do that cessation plant with okra and you can keep it all the way into the fall. And that's a great plant that loves the heat again. Doesn't have a lot of insect pressure. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's one of the things you skate by if you have a hard year on insects. So okra is another one. Yeah, if you don't like reaching way up tall or getting on a laddered peak, it gets too tall. 
you got time to get another round in and get plenty of good yeah. harvest. We talked about peppers kind of the same way with eggplant. You can replant peppers in the fall, uh, or you can, you know, just, just hold on to yours through the summer and they'll kick back up. One thing we don't, I don't really do a whole lot of in the fall, and it has a lot to do with the white fly pressure, is summer squash. Now, it can be done. Um, plenty of folks do it. And I would say if you're going to do it, just like with a lot of these things, like with the cucumbers, you want to make sure you plant a good disease-resistant variety. Um, I have people call all the time during the year saying, what, well, what kind of squash I need to plant? And look here, if it's in the springtime, I never really, I say you plant any of them. It's no big deal. But when you start getting in that late summer and that fall planting, it makes a huge difference on what variety of squash you're going to plant. Make sure you get one that's got a good disease package because it's tough enough to grow them but uh, when you got one that's got a good disease package, it makes it easier and your success rate's a lot higher. So it does make a difference. Yeah, so as far as yellow squash, I'd highly recommend this gold star here. And then as far as zucchini goes, that pascola, uh, as far as vigor, in my opinion, that one there is really, really hard to beat. Yep. Tomatoes. A lot of people growing, I know, talk to people in Florida that are doing fall crops with tomatoes. We don't necessarily do it. That white fly pressure is pretty tough on them. Uh, it can be done. I have done it. Yeah. Yeah, a lot of people ask us why we don't do it. It's, it's tough for us here, um, but it can be done. And I don't want to discourage anybody from doing it. Definitely give it a try. Yeah. And get you some tomatoes off in the it fall. It just doesn't work with our rotation as well as, I mean, I'd much rather plant flowers and say at this time of year, and I had to try to grow a crop of tomatoes with the amount of effort I got put in there. You know, we talk about winter squash a lot. A lot of people can still get a winter squash in, especially maybe if you're in zone, what, seven, you could probably still get one in. Maybe. You know, 90 days to maturity on most of these. Mm -hmm. So let's back that up. So we got November, October, heck yeah, yeah. Now these, some of these butternuts. 20 days left to, or right at 120 days left to November, yeah. Some of these butternuts are closer to 110 days, but some of your pepo varieties, some of your pepo varieties, your, your delicata, your acorns, stuff like that, are going to come off a lot quicker. Uh, your machada types like these are going to be a little slower because mm -hmm. uh, they they stay on the vine a little longer. Your uh, spaghetti squash, you can probably get those off pretty quick. If you're growing winter squash, just same thing with summer squash. You kind of want to grow a good disease-resistant variety or one that has some built-in. Uh, and I can't recommend this South Anna butternut uh, good enough. Seminole pumpkin Cherokee tan would be other great ones. Unfortunately, we're out of those, but South Anna butternut is going to be the closest you get. Make sure that you got your spray program intact there because you're going to need to stay after that uh, <coughs> disease and insect control. All right. Anybody else got any good suggestions on things they like to replant in the fall? Let us know in the comments below. And, um, if you have any questions about what can and what can't you plant, also put those in there. We got a few questions from last week's show, and if we answer your question on the show, send us an email to cussserve at hostools.com, and we'll send you a nice little prize. First question is from Wayne Martin. He says, why can home gardeners not grow hybrids, but you can buy them? I plant heritage seeds, I save seeds due to the possibility of food shortages or delivery interruption. What is your opinion on food shortages and possibly delivery interruption? So, uh, I'll speak on the food shortage part. Now, I can't speak for the meat industry because I, I'm not really involved in that. I don't understand. I, I don't have a lot of contacts or visibility there. As far as the vegetable side, I will say that I have not seen any sign of a food shortage on the vegetable side. We have tons of commercial produce uh, around here. If uh, I could take you seven, eight miles down the road and show you a half a billion dollar uh, produce operation that everything seems to be operating standard as normal. And for you folks in Alabama, that's uh, 500 million. Uh, for the folks who went to school at Tuscaloosa, that's that's just a lot of money yeah. but uh <laughs> I, I we haven't seen anything that would suggest that there's going to be any shortage on the vegetable side uh food wise that i've noticed yeah i do understand this concern about because because the, the problem what we're looking at now is the unforeseen we've had things happen this year that we would have never foreseen happen right i mean we got shortages of, we've been trying to source plastic spray balls mm -hmm. there's a shortage of them 
I mean, these certain things that there's huge shortages out there on uh, anything that's classified as a disinfect disinfectant, they've been a, a shortage on it. It's starting to catch up a little bit. I was really surprised by these spray bottles. You can't buy a spray bottle wholesale anywhere. They just sold out. So I do understand this concern there. The reason uh, we grow hybrids is because they outperform on some levels than they do open pollinated. We do grow a decent amount of open pollinated. So those open pollinated you can keep, replant, they'll come back true to variety, the hybrids will not. Uh, it's just personal preference what you want to do. I understand a lot of people are saving their own seeds and it's probably a good thing to do on a certain level, but I would know that I'd go whole hog and make that make that on everything. Uh, as far as seed saving goes, this is what I always tell people. If it's a variety like an owl squash or a Cherokee tam, something you can't get anywhere else, something that you have, it's been passed down, nobody's selling it, definitely save it. If it's a variety of tomato, like even Brandywine or Cherokee Purple or something like that, that's readily available, it, think about is it really worth your time to, to say, is it worth $4? or whatever you're paying per seed packet to save 50 seeds. It may not be worth your time. Uh, th there's Those varieties, those real popular varieties, they're not going anywhere. They're always going to be available. You don't have to be scared that that variety is going to all of a sudden well, fall well, off the what, market. Well, one point Wayne is bringing up there is what if something happens and there's an interruption to the, to the supply chain that you can't get them? And I understand this concern a little bit because we've seen things that we never thought would happen this year. Right. But I do get the point a little bit. I haven't seen any uh, <coughs> disruption in, in the availability of seeds. It's been more the ability to pack the seeds. Right. Number two is from Funny Cat. He says, can a corn plant ever be too tall or too short when it starts tasseling? Um, if no, then why do you not hear about many corn stalks? I guess he's asking, uh, you know, what happens if your corn starts tasseling when it's too small? Well, sometimes if the corn does get stressed out and you don't grow it out right, it will tassel a little on the small side. And there are some hybrids out there that just normally tassel on the small side. Anyway, I noticed in the fall of the year, we've had commercial growers right here, their corn will tassel out at three to four foot tall. I think it's due to variety and it probably tassels a little quicker in the, um, in the fall of the year. Hickory King, you're going to get a 12, 13 foot stalk out of it with tassel, tassels out. So I've never seen one get too tall to tassel out. It normally means you got a good, strong plant. However, some of these hybrid varieties will tassel out short. Uh, I wouldn't worry about it a whole lot. Just do the best you can. Grow the corn, put the fertilizer to it, put the water to it. And when it tassels out, it's going to tassel out and make corn. Never heard anything about mini corn stalks. Mm -hmm. I don't know. I like mine. It, to me, it's a good judge that I grew my corn right if them stalks are about six, seven foot tall when they tassel. That lets me know I kind of hit everything right on time with my fertilizer and everything. Yeah, but you've seen those fields just like I have. Yeah, you? yeah I have. A little over waist high. I have. Now, I don't know how good a corn they made. Well, well you would, they put crews in there and pick it, so you assume they make it. Yeah, I don't know. assume so. All right, from Linda McNoan. McNoan? I think that's McCown. McCown, boy, I missed that one up there. Mm -hmm. Hey, Travis, how do you like half runner beans? Will you grow them again? So I grew the half runner beans as, as my kind of last succession bean planting, and it slipped up, got too hot of them. Had some awesome looking vines. Um, the plants, they started making some beans, but my pest pressure got real bad, and they start getting stung a little bit same thing happened miss hoss had some in her raised beds um and then next thing you know they started dropping blooms it got too hot well a lot of people on the row by row group and stuff asking why the beans ain't making this time of year and folk the beans ain't gonna do nothing when it's hot nope. uh either just hold on to them or, or wait and plant some more in fall they ain't gonna produce pods when it's real hot like this so i, I really did like the half runners from what i got off of them I uh, just planted them in a little too late of a slot and uh, pest pressure got on me and uh, and bloom started dropping. Last one here is from Southern Boy and he says, what are your best sources for fig plants? Thanks so much. I'm really enjoying your show. Yeah, I've been bit by the fig bug uh, pretty bad this year. I've been clipping some newer varieties that I didn't know of. So a couple of places I've ordered from, one of them would be Tinker Bug. Figs. This one right here comes from this Tinker Bug Figs, and it's all one word, I think, dot com. It's a nice nursery. I mean, I got them in. They have a nice selection of uh, varieties. 
I got them in a thick from up north, grew them in a greenhouse, and I got these in. These look fine. I ordered also from Ison's. I was a little disappointed from the last one I ordered from Ison's because they're not going to ship it until December. And I felt like they should have told me that when I ordered it, but they didn't. So I had to reply. But Ison's is a nursery here in Georgia. Uh, another nursery that's not too far from us is one called Just Fruits and Exotics, which is a good one down in Crawford, North Florida. But Fig Bid is a place you can go to on the website and find pretty much anything you want as far as fig related. Now, normally speaking, I like to try to order fig trees as close by as I can. And in my mind, it just makes me feel better because they don't have to stay in that shipping post office uh, chain or the UPS chain very long and I can get them quickly. Now, these come from up in New Jersey and they didn't have any problems whatsoever. Now, I do want to touch on one thing. I got I got comments too on, on that particular variety uh, company okay. trees too. So this tree here is a tissue cultural tree, and this is what the majority you're gonna see when you order from a lot of nurseries, and that is done in a controlled environment. What they do is take tissues from these leaves and they grow them out in little pea trees there, and they can grow out a lot of them in just a little bitty thing. They have to do it in a highly controlled environment. But you'll almost look like the trees as a miniature tree. I mean, this stem on this thing is not much bigger than a pencil lid. And these things are ideal for nurseries growing them and selling them online because they're easy to ship. These things are going to take a little bit longer and harder to get going than what from regular cutting would be. So you may want to ask those questions when you do order from a nursery. Is it tissue culture or is it grown from a cutting? If it's grown from a cutting, it's going to have more vigor. It's going to come out quicker. But... I mean, it's going to be a bigger tree. It could easily be heck, three or four foot, and we all know it's hard to ship a three or four foot tree. That's the reason most of you nurseries do not do that. I'm not a huge fan of the tissue culture trees, I'll be honest with you, but it does afford me to be able to get some varieties that I could not get otherwise. If I have my preference, I want a cutting propagated tree, but if I don't have access to that variety, then I have to go to this method right here. I, I don't care for the tissue culture trees at all, and I'm not going to buy any more of them. They just they're, they're tough. They're they, tough. They, don't, they don't do well when planted. They, they, I don't like the growth habit of them. And next time if I order anyone from online, I'm going to ask specifically because I, I got some from this company, and uh, it's been tough to keep them going along. I'm just not a, not a fan of tissue cultures. Yeah, it's going, you can figure on, it's going to take, they're going to see, you're going to sit yourself back probably a year on these verses of cuttings. The, the other thing is, as far as cuttings go, because I've ordered some cuttings from different people and, and places, uh, Facebook groups and stuff, and planted, so I've planted some tissue cultures, some cuttings we did, some cuttings that were grown by other companies. Now, the best looking trees I got are from the little cuttings that we grew out ourselves. Yeah, and those are going to outperform all the way around. Uh, and I don't know if it's because they're already acclimated down here. I don't know what it is. Now, I got some cutting trees, trees that were grown from cuttings, but they were also grafted, and I don't care much for those either. They're not, those grafted ones are not very hardy at all. I've lost several that were grafted. Uh, so, in my opinion, I think buying cuttings and growing your own from the cuttings is probably the best way to get the best looking tree. Uh, it is. Uh, everybody don't have the ability to grow from cuttings. It's, it can be a little bit aggravating, especially if your time is off a little bit there. Uh, the tissue culture, I'm not totally against. I think you need to understand what you're up against on the two, though. By far, I'd rather have the cut. If you're going to put this on your patio in a, a container pot, whatever, it would probably do great. But planting it outside like we do... Uh, it, it's tough, and uh, I'm just not a big fan. It is a way to get some of the unusual varieties. You're not going to be able to get a cut-in variety. You're going to be hard-pressed to get a cut in variety of some of these unusual varieties. Maybe so. Maybe so. So there you have it. Check out Figbit, and just understand the difference between tissue culture and uh, some of your propagating methods, such as uh, we like to cut them and propagate our own cuttings. There you have it. All right. So good stuff tonight. Lots of stuff coming up. Uh, month of August, just taking a break. And then, and then September will kick back up. Everything will be going uh, wide open, planting stuff. Yeah, a lot of good stuff going on. 
Hope everybody enjoyed the show tonight. If you did enjoy the show, make sure you give us a big thumbs up. Don't forget to hit that subscribe button and that bell button so you get notified every time we come out with a new video. And if you did enjoy tonight's show, check out these other two videos right here. I think you'll really enjoy those as well. We'll see you guys next time.